Hello, class. Today we are going to be focusing on subordinating clauses. Now, today with our subordinating clauses, again, we have a couple things we want to review, and that's making sure that we understand that adverb clauses or adjective clauses, both of these make up subordinating clauses. So an adverb clause is a subordinating clause, and an adjective clause is a subordinating clause. But the thing we have to remember is that they both, they both must have the subject and the verb to be a clause. If they don't, they're our friend the phrase. So right now, we're going to be looking at clauses. And to be more specific than that, we are going to focus on adverb clauses because today, you will be able to properly diagram adverb clauses. You will be able to properly diagram adverb clauses. That is the objective. Make sure that you know what our objective is because if I combine ask, Liliana, we all know what happens. All right, so let's get started. First thing we have to understand when we're dealing with adverb clauses or any subordinating clause is that we're always going to have two things. You have to have an independent clause plus your subordinating clause. To, act, to, to have a subordinate clause, you must have an independent clause. When we diagram independent and subordinate clauses and they're in the sentence together, that's what we call a complex sentence, we have to make sure that we diagram them properly. And the first thing is independence can be by themselves, so that means they're number one. So whenever we diagram, diagram using these two things, we always diagram the independent clause on top and then we connect it with a dotted line to our subordinating clause on the bottom. So the independent clause will go first on top, and our subordinating clause will go second on the bottom. That is the order in which we do this. We must make sure that we label them like they're supposed to be diagrammed. Okay, so now that we know how they go, independent first, subordinating clause second, we're going to go by our rules of engagement that we always do when we diagram. And the rules of engagement, we always start with the first one as reading the sentence carefully, right? We read the sentence. After we've read the sentence, we want to label all of our subjects and all of our verbs. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and circle the prepositions. And then we circle the preposition and we underline the prepositional phrase. That means we go all the way down to the object of the preposition. That tells us the what got of or of what or for what, in what, next to what. Remember we use the preposition with that question what. Then we find our complements. We want to find all of our complements. Remember our complements can be predicate adjectives, predicate nominatives. Those are the linking verb, subject complements, and then we've got our action verb, which is our direct object, and our indirect object. Remember, we cannot have an indirect object without a direct object, so those are our complements. So we look for those ones, and those are easy ones to find. Remember, if it's a linking verb, so if was, is, any kind of form of that, are, we know it's going to have a predicate adjective or a predicate nominative, depending on what it's doing. If it's an action verb, meaning something that you physically do or you mentally do, you can probably have a direct object. Doesn't guarantee an indirect object, but you might have a direct object. After we've done all that, we want to locate any. That's uh, supposed to be locate and. We have a misspelling here. Let me scratch that out. Should be locate and separate the different clauses by finding the subordinating conjunction. We're looking for that subordinating conjunction. If I, I don't remember correctly, I think it was on page 80-something, maybe 90. Uh, let's see, it was page 121. So we use page 121 for a common list of them. Those are the things that we want to do to be able to properly diagram these. So let's go ahead and take this, spoon it off to the side here. We'll keep those rules of engagement somewhat close by so that we know what we're doing. Now we've got to go on to the next thing. So here's our sentence. After I finish my homework, I will play video games. And as we've already indicated, 
things that we have to do first is we have to label, after we've read our sentence, we've read our sentence, then we have to label all the subjects and verbs. I'm going to go and do that in green. So I finished my work. What was going on? Something got finished. I did the finishing. So there's my subject. There's my verb. I will also, oh, subject and two verbs, right? Helping verb, main verb, play video games. So I've got my it's a helping verb. Terrible, terrible. Subject and helping verb album. Now, I've done that. So I want to look for prepositions. Do I have any prepositions? Remember page 58 is the prepositional page? Well, I know there is no prepositions. So I can mark off number three. Then I go to find all the complements. Finish is an action verb. And will play. Those are helping action verb. So then we probably have a direct object. Let's find out. What was it that got finished? What is it that I finished? What got finished? The homework. So there's my direct object. And my is a, a pronoun, but it's basically an adjective because it's describing whose homework. And then my video games, well, what got played? The games got played. But we're going to keep these together because I think you need video in this case. So that's my direct object. Okay, so everything's labeled. So I've done my, I found my compliments. Now I want to locate the different clauses. Well, I have a subject verb here and a subject verb here. So I know that I've got two clauses. And so that comma is a big help because that tells me that's where the separation occurs. Sometimes there's no comma and we just have to find the subordinate conjunction. In this case, there is a comma, so I look at the first one, I, or the after, there's my subordinating conjunction. So here's my clause, and then that's my subordinating clause. And then over here is my independent clause. Okay, so now we've labeled everything and we know which clause is which. Now we're ready to diagram. So let's go ahead and take this, drink it, set it off over here, out of the way. We'll still need it, but I don't need it right in my way. And now I have to diagram. Now we've already talked about diagramming, and the first thing I want to do is diagram the independent class. I'm just going to focus on this one right here, that one only. I will play video games. Now we start with our horizontal line, split it in half with a vertical line, and we put our subject on this side as always, I, my verb, will play, because the helping verb goes with it. Now in this case, we have a direct object. Direct object is that one where we do the straight line up. And we're going to do video game. So my independent clause is done. Now I want to go ahead and do my subordinating clause. I'm not going to worry about after. I'm just going to do the I finish my homework, because that's the easy part. So we start with a horizontal line. Split it in half. I I think I forgot to hit play because you just missed a beautiful presentation. But let me go ahead and explain it to you one more time. So I'll have to explain it really fast. We do our independent clause first, right here. And our independent clause is I will play video games. So I do my horizontal line followed by my vertical line. And I put my subject here my whole verb phrase here, and I will, because it's a helping verb, they're not two main verbs, or two, it's a helping verb and a main verb, that's why they're together, will play. My direct object video game with the straight up do not break down. And then after we've done that, we go over to our subordinate clause. We're just going to focus on the main part of the sentence, ignore the subordinating conjunction, and we do our horizontal line, vertical line, subject, verb, direct object. My, we said, was a adjective describing whose homework, my homework. Why did I say home worry? Hmm, weird. Anyway, this is where all the magic happens right here. I must verb to verb make this connection when it's an adverb clause. When it's an adverb clause, I go verb to verb. Verbs to verbs. And I do a dotted line. And that's where I put my subordinating conjunction. I put a big A-F-T-E-R because it was the first one in the sentence, so I must capitalize it here so that way people know that this clause was first in the sentence, and that way they can properly rewrite and reconstruct the sentence. Okay, here's our next sentence. Let's see how you do. We start reading the sentence carefully. John stayed home today because he was feeling sick. So go ahead and label the subjects and verbs. Pause it. All right, hopefully you paused it. Now, see how you did. If you didn't get these right, make sure that you understand why you didn't get them. So, my subject for the first part, John. What did John do? Stayed. Okay. Now I say over here, he, subject, and was 
feeling. Hmm, okay. And was is a helping verb in this situation. Now, go ahead and circle any prepositions that you may see and pause this for a second. And then when you come back, I'll give you the answer. Welcome back. Hopefully you didn't circle any because there are no prepositions. So there's nothing to circle or underline. So there's no prepositions. Now we want to find our complements. So we look at this verb, stay. That is an action verb. And he was feeling sick. Feeling could be action, but in this case it's describing how he was feeling. It wasn't him actually touching something. So this is a linking verb. So let's stick with the action. Action means we're going to be dealing with either a um, direct object or an indirect object. Uh, direct object. What stayed? What stayed? Home? No, John stayed, so there is no direct object. So home is describing where he stayed. So this is actually an adverb and an adverb, because that's telling you when he stayed and where he stayed. Ah, that was a tricky one. Did you get it? Hopefully you did. Now let's look at the back part. Was feeling. It's describing how he was feeling, so hopefully you labeled this as a predicate adjective. Right? Now we've done four. Now we had to separate the two clauses. Well, comma, there shouldn't be a comma there. That's bad, bad grammar. That shouldn't be a comma. Because when the subordinating conjunction is in the middle of the sentence, you don't need a comma. When it's in the front of the sentence, you'll need a comma. So there's my subordinating clause. And here is my independent clause. All right. Hold on a second. All right. I've given you the diagram, what it should look like when you're done. Your job is to put everything in the right place and then bring it to me. So go ahead and do this, recreate, recreate this on a piece of paper and then fill in using this sentence where each of those go, okay? And then bring it to me and I will let you know if you did it right or wrong. Good luck. Hey, congratulations on doing it correctly. You are ready to continue. If you did not bring me what you were supposed to, you need to go back, do what you're supposed to do, bring it to me because this is worth points. So if you didn't, pause it, rewind it, get it done. If not, continue on. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this, either snapshot it and get in there and put it all in how you need to, or do it, recreate it on a piece of paper, whatever you need. I, give, I gave you the scaffold, I gave you the help, I gave you the little bit so that you can get the part you need. Label the sentence. So first things first, you're going to label the sentence, all of it, and then you're going to diagram it. I need to see both. Bring it to me when you're done. If you do well, you're ready for the next step. Again, congratulations on getting the other one. Now you're ready for the next one. Take this one and go ahead and label and then diagram. I'm not going to give you any help except for one thing, and that is both verbs that you're going to find. Both verbs. Wow, that is terrible. My goodness. Erase that. Try this again. Both of the verbs will equal linking. So you're going to be looking for either a predicate adjective. Oh, my. I'm having some problems, as you can see. Try this again. Predicate adjective or a predicate nominative. That's the only little bit of help I'm going to give you. So go ahead and label and diagram that sentence and bring it to me. And then you're ready for your assignment. Great job.